Hello and welcome to Corruption 2029. This game is actually from the same developers that created Mutant Year Zero. And if you are at all a fan of that game or like tactical strategy games, then this is probably going to be something you might be interested in. Anyway, we're going to be creating a new game. As you can see, there's easy, medium, hard. I'm going to probably play on medium because I... <laughs> I don't really want to die super badly, but I'm probably going to end up dying anyway, even on medium. And if you would like to check out this game, there is a link in the description. In the near future, a second American Civil War breaks out between two factions, the NAC and the UPA. Misinformation and propaganda blur the truth and feeds the hate between the two factions. Technology has turned soldiers into living machines, commanded remotely from outside the battlefield. These units have little left of their humanity. Navigator EOS, I need you to close all other comms and remain on this channel. Your priority should be to locate any surviving crew members and link them to the squad. Sending some rough coordinates to get you started. And this is exactly what you would expect from the bearded ladies, which is what the what these developers are called. And I gotta say, I've played already quite a bit of this. And I am very much liking what I'm seeing here because, you know, Mutant Year Zero, it had a little bit of humor here and there. This is much more dystopian, much more kind of visceral. And even though Mutant Year Zero did have its moments, this is on a whole different level in that kind of sense. Great. That's one unit linked to the squad. And this is, I gotta say, probably much more hardcore as well. I'm detecting a small number of NAC troops. They seem to be grouped around one of our units. Proceed with caution. All right, so here we go. To help plan the perfect ambush, you can split up and hide your units. Hidden units cannot be seen by enemy units and will remain hidden until activated. All right, so as you can see right here, it has a very similar system to Mutant Year Zero in the way that you can split up your units and independently control them, and it will change your, uh, shall we say, it will change your the way that you control your units in between the battles. So, for example, if I were to do this, and then I were to go over here, I'm in stealth, the guy can't see me or anything like that, and what we can then do is we can hide right here, and then we can go into tactical combat, which is turn-based of course. Each unit in your squad gets two action points per turn. Some actions will end your turn once used, such as shooting your weapon for example. Alright, so we have not been spotted. I have the opportunity to activate Wolf right here, and we can potentially eliminate this particular protector. And I think we're probably going to do that, so let's activate. And as you can see, we have four options. You can just continue to hide, I can do Overwatch, or I can shoot. Personally, I feel like shooting is probably going to be a good thing to do because we'll probably kill the guy no problem at all as you can see down in the bottom left it tells you everything you need to know about your weapon four damage five critical damage and the amount of shots that we have the amount of ammo that we have and everything so let's fire and there you go easy kill easy kill all right so now it takes us out of the tactical combat which i gotta say is really cool and we're back into stealth and what i can do is i can just change in between my soldiers right here and we can actually go over and try and eliminate these 
other enemies. Now, bear in mind, because we're in stealth, we can basically go wherever we want to go, you know? We can uh, set up the perfect ambush for these enemies. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, so that guy is now hidden. I'm going to set the other one over here, probably around this car here. Bear in mind that taking cover has a drastic effect on how protected your units are actually going to be. Mm, I actually don't like this positioning. I think I like this positioning a little better. All right, so now let's go for an ambush. Boom, and we will start to attack. Using cover during combat is essential. So yeah, as you can see right here, low, co low cover gives you 25% defense bonus, while full cover gives you 75%, a massive 50% increase. And flanking a cover position will cancel its defensive bonus. Anyone that's played Mutant Year Zero will know exactly how this works. Okay, so let's activate and try and kill some of these guys. Why not? Okay, so shoot. That is 100% chance. Boom, this guy's gonna be dead. There we go, and we can also then switch to our other character, and we can also activate this one, and then we can shoot. Oh, we have no line of fire! Are you serious? We have no line of fire? Ah, no, I've made an error. Ah, I, I was one space away, but it's okay, because we can actually just walk over here. We're still in stealth, and it's still my turn, so I can still salvage my slight blunder, but anyway. <laughs> let's uh, let's fire. And there we go. Fantastic. So now I can regroup. I can tell everyone to regroup and I can tell that guy to come over here and follow me and now we can link our new unit. Excellent. That's the last surviving unit. Checking the status of our VTOL. The dropship was destroyed upon impact. All ordnance carried on board has also been lost. Scanning the area for alternative transport. <laughs> All right, and the rescued unit has a silenced weapon, which is actually really nice because now we, what we can do is while sneaking, we can kill solo enemies without being detected. But bear in mind that, you know, we can still get detected if we make a mistake. Vicinity, unarmed, but heavily armored. So you should be able to bully through any flak. Sending coordinates. And now we can go to the next area. As is the case with Mutant Year Zero as well, there are levels full of very, very dense enemies and items and all kinds of things, and you're going to be able to go through those in loading screen fashion, and then you can uh, look around and see if you can scalv uh, scalvage? <laughs> scavenge and salvage, that's what I was attempting to go for there, but uh, yes, failed completely. Anyway, there's a nice medkit. That's going to be very helpful. Medkits are found here. You can also use medkits outside of combat in the loadout screen if we take any damage. So, ah, there's a civilian note over there as well. Hello. I never thought I'd be saying this, but President Ford is right. The UPA are monsters, and they are coming to take it all from us hard-working Americans. I've been living here my whole life. Didn't want to move to the big city, but now those terrorist assholes are driving us further and further towards the capital. I hope the house is still there when we return. All right, so there you go. We have uh, a little bit of exposition. You are free to approach your objective however you like. Use sneak to scope out objectives and look for weak points. Or use brute force to attempt to overpower the enemy. All right, so let me just tell you something real quick. There are distractions in this game and you are going to be able to use those distractions to lure enemies into uh, situations that they wouldn't potentially want to be in. So for example, there's a distraction right there. I can sabotage this particular vehicle and then I can have one of the enemies come on over and basically be like, hello, uh, kill me please, basically. So let's sabotage the radio. Hey, what was that? And hopefully, I won't get seen. I'm a bit worried about this. <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, so now let's ambush the guy. We have a silenced weapon with this particular character, and that will enable us to be able to kill this guy, hopefully in one hit. Yeah, there we go. Got four damage. This guy's got four HP, and boom. 
Wow, we actually got the headshot as well. That's very nice. All right, so there you go. Now we're back into regular movement, and we are going to then set up another ambush for the remaining enemies. Now, bear in mind that I believe there is a very strong opponent in this area, and it would be good if I would not take too much damage from him. Now, this is the actual vessel that we are going to need to uh, commandeer, shall we say. And it's going to be a bit difficult. It's going to be a bit difficult. As you can see, look, there we go. That's the guy that I'm talking about. The NAC Liquidator. That's going to be a bit of a harsh fellow to deal with. He has, I don't even know how much HP, but he's got quite a bit in comparison to the regular guys. The regular guys have just got, what, four, I believe? So... He's got, I think, like 10. Yeah, there we go. He's got 10. So that is going to be kind of harsh. Anyway, I am going to hide here. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, you know, I might be uh, I might be overextending myself a little bit. But that's exactly what we want to see, you know. We want to see either me do absolutely fantastically and kill everyone in no time at all. Or we want me to die very horribly and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, let's move here. All right. So I'm actually unsure what I want to do because what I could do is I could sneak around to the other side there, but I think this cover is pretty good as it is because what we can do is we can take our silenced fellow and we can basically kill this guy right in front of us immediately. And then we can all focus on killing the liquidator. I think that might make sense. I think there are some more enemies somewhere nearby which is a bit of a problem. Bear in mind that our silenced weapon only has one, well, uh, one shot before it needs to reload. So there's a bit of a, bit of an issue with that. But anyway, let's ambush them, and we'll see if we can uh, maybe do something. We've we've kind of kind of got some decent uh, decent positioning in my opinion at least. So let's fire the weapon. Boom! He's dead. Hopefully the other guy will not react. He didn't. <laughs> wow. Okay, I was, I'm actually uh, kind of surprised. I thought that he was definitely going to react in some way. I thought he would be like, oh, look at that. One of my, uh, one of my friends has uh, taken some fatal damage. Maybe I, should <laughs> Maybe I should react to that. But no, no. He apparently did not see it. So that's actually kind of fantastic. I'm just going to look around and see if there are any other enemies. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do have a couple of others. Oh, there's a config grenade. I actually don't know what that is. Ah! I need backup. Ah, there we go. So they can actually see you if you go a little bit too close to them. So it is not a uh, complete 100% invisibility. Now I'm, now I'm in trouble. Now I am in trouble. I was uh, a little bit overconfident, shall we say. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to sneak around here. Can I shoot this guy from there? Yes, I can. And he's dead. So let's actually go around. Boom. We're in high cover now as well, which is even better. And now we can fire at this fellow. Boom. You're dead. Okay. That's great. And now... Now we can deal with the rest. Now, unfortunately, this guy over here... <laughs> yeah, he's got Overwatch. So this is going to be a bit problematic. 50% uh, chance or 50% chance. I think I'm going to go for this guy because he's currently... Uh, well, he's one hit away from dying. So I think it's a good idea that we try and take him out. There we go. Nice. We took him down. And that means that my other unit will be able to move basically as much as they want. Uh, that's not actually cover. This is low cover. Uh, I guess we'll... Uh, that's the thing. I kind of don't want to put ourselves in a bad situation. And if I go here, I could basically be flanked almost immediately. Because the liquidator could run over here and then flank us from the side. So I think we're going to go over in this direction. I'm aiming to take zero damage. If I can. Ah! Really? Oh, I can't believe that. Okay, from such a far distance and was able to deal that much damage? Ah, oh, that's unfortunate, isn't it? All right, so that's a 75% chance. Guess we'll take it. Nice, good damage, good damage. And now I do need to reload, which is a problem. I'm actually wondering what my percentage chance to hit this guy is. Very low. 50% from here. 
50% from here. What if I change my weapon? That's a 50%. How much damage do I do with this? Three damage. Mm, yeah. Not a big fan of that, but I guess it's better than uh, having to reload and do all that annoying stuff. So I'm guessing... That's a 75% chance. I guess I'll just take the 50. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, that was good. That was a nice little bit of damage there. And now, now we're in a bit of a, oh, a bit of a sticky situation because I could theoretically have one of my people die. Oh, that's a 75% chance. I did not expect that. Okay, that's great. Let's just move over there and then just shoot from this, from this distance. This should be good. This should be a hit. Nice. There we go. We took him down. All right, so we took one hit. Not bad. That's our ride secured. I will update you from inside the harpy. Okay, uh, now just wait a second. Wait a second, uh, commander person, uh, or, or whoever. Um, I'm just wanting to uh, pick up this Split. config grenade. There we go. Config grenades are found in the combat zone and can be thrown during combat. Config grenades can be configured to perform different effects before they are thrown by pressing X, I think it is. The effects available depend on the squad upgrades you have unlocked by completing missions. Ooh, yeah, I haven't gotten to that point Let's yet, go. so I'm actually very excited to see what kinds of customizations we'll have available. I actually don't think we are able to pick up anything else, but bear in mind that health is persistent, as you can no doubt tell. Wolf has the damage that they've sustained in that last battle, and I'm going to need to use a medkit to be able to repair it. So that's that's a pretty pretty hardcore way of going about things. I know that uh, I, I believe Mutant Year Zero did that on uh, higher difficulties as well. So anyway, let's go into the Harpy. All right, so there you go. We have done it. We didn't gain any um, bonus objectives. Obviously, we didn't have any of those. What, what are my rewards? Ah, an active implant. We gained an augmented leap. Whilst having an almost unlimited battery life, the maximum strength of augmented limbs is purposefully limited to prevent injury to the unit and to avoid unnecessary wear on the equipment. This module briefly overrides the leg limiters, which allows for a single superhuman leap. Unit is able to leap a great distance will also knock back enemies. That sounds fun. And we also gained the incendiary grenade, which is a squad upgrade. Grants the ability for the squad to convert regular explosive grenades into anti-personnel incendiaries. When thrown against a hard surface, a localized spread of napalm is produced, which sticks to all surfaces it comes into contact with. Ouch. Okay, so two fire damage over two turns. That's pretty good. Commander, I am patching directly into the Harpy's onboard computer. Operation data incoming. Five hours ago, an NAC communicate was intercepted which highlighted the activation of a weapon of mass destruction. Code name, Savior. The exact location of this site is unknown. We believe that this weapon is to be used in a retaliatory strike against the UPA. Your mission is to locate and secure Savior at any cost. Whoa, okay, wow, that, that's, uh, that's pretty heavy stuff. Uh, considering I just literally came online, I mean, all of my guys were basically offline up until, I don't even know. 30 minutes ago, but anyway, let's uh, let's select this and uh, go to missions, I guess. These are your current available missions. The UPA will authorize implant usage depending on mission performance. If you are feeling like you really want to stick it to the NAC, you can try to earn some medals. Ah, there you go. So you can actually increase your, uh, shall we say, effectiveness by earning medals. In other words, as you can see right here, there are bonus objectives, kill three enemies without causing an alert, and then you're going to be gaining a weapon, the Zebra SG-33, which is insane. That's so good. It does five damage and has a range of seven. It is only one clip. 
it, it has only one bullet technically so that is a uh, it's a shotgun as you can see but it is capable of hitting multiple targets which is pretty fun and then what else do we have here we have a kinetic barrier as well which is an active implant which is basically like a shield so that's actually really cool throw an area of effect shield that lasts for one turn that could literally save your life like no one's business and there are a whole bunch of other things which unfortunately i won't be able to uh, show you right now but that seems pretty fun and then we have also bonus rewards which increase weapon range by 25 percent and what was the other one movement booster increases the unit's tactical movement range by four tiles and these are the medals as you can see right here so during the entire mission do not use any grenades use a maximum of two tactical rounds locate and kill the technical sergeant last interesting aha uh -huh. so there's a lot of replayability there as well you can assign weapons and implants each unit can carry up to two weapons into the field they can be given up to three active implants in any combination you like Squad stats and passive implant data is also displayed here. Ah, there we go. All right, so that will obviously give you the ability to add augmented leap, for example, and I guess I will actually give it to uh, Briggs. I'm, I'm actually wondering, can I give it to all of them? No, no, I can only give it to one, which is understandable, no problem at all there. But yeah, they are going to be getting so many different things. What about the incendiary grenade as well? I guess, uh, can, can we... No, it seems like that is just a a generalized squad upgrade, which I think is pretty cool. And what I really like about this already is the fact that they show you so many of your unit's stats. So you can see here, time as leader, deaths, total kills, and what kind of kills you have also gained as well. And it shows you what kind of, what kind of uh, items you've been using as well, which is really nice. This screen shows our current knowledge of NAC territory. You can choose your landing site and view NAC intel. Be advised, you cannot change the squad's loadout during an active mission. Wow. All right. So at, at, at the moment, I literally have this uh, this one drop zone, but there are four more. And you can imagine that there's many, many more missions in the, each of these places. And obviously getting the medals is going to give you a lot of uh, different challenge. But I suppose that's actually going to be it for this first episode. If you'd like to see more, then by all means, let me know. But if you would like to check out the game for yourself, then there is a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.